Hello and welcome to this exploring session, uh, character exploring session. We are continuing our series looking at the play Gorbadoc and the characters within it, trying to get a sense of uh, what we might be doing with this play in terms of performance. Uh, we're explicitly working towards a future audio, uh, full cast audio production, but also looking to plan a live stage production when what sometime in the future, such things are possible again. Um, at this stage, uh, we're playing around with uh, the characters of Ferex and Porex, the two sons of Gorbadoc, who both have effectively been turned against each other by the question of the king's, uh, uh, in, uh, th their inheritance from the king. Who gets the kingdom? Well, it's been split between the two of them. And that is something that has never gone wrong in any play or at any, 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 any uh, drama ever before or since. Um, so we're focusing today on Act Two. Uh, act Two, Scene One is all about Ferex, and then Act Two, Scene Two is uh, focuses on Porex. We have done an exploring read through of the play already, uh, but we actually managed to splinch the, uh, the these two scenes over two different sessions. So I'm quite keen on finding how they work, not only in their own right, but also how they work um, uh, one after the other. Uh, to help explore these uh, texts and these characters is this crack team of, uh, of, uh, of uh, people from around the world uh, to help us explore it. So for this session today, reading the parts of Ferex and Porex, <coughs> respectively, is... Uh, I'm Alex Scott Fairley and I'm an actor from the Highlands of Scotland. And reading uh, for this session, uh, Dorden is... Hi, I'm Steve Longstaff. I'm a scholar of early modern drama based in Lancaster in the UK. Uh, reading the parts of uh, uh, Hermon and Tindar uh, is... Nuno Meireles, a PhD candidate in materialities of literature based in Portugal. And somebody's dog. I'm not sure who's, whose dog that one is. Uh, that Alex is owning up to that. You'll hear mine later on. And finally, reading uh, the part of Philander as well is... Jennifer Forsyth. I'm a professor of Renaissance literature in Pennsylvania. And I am your host, Robert Crichton. I'm going to be uh, guiding us through this, trying to get a sense of the text, uh, still rooting out any uh, textual variations uh, and issues that we might find as we go. So for uh, ease, we're going to just start with Act 2, Scene 1. We're just going to read through the text a bit at a time, probably a page at a time, uh, pause, discuss, dissect, and then move forward. So uh, let us begin. This is Ferex, Hermon, and Dorden uh, in, in uh, some, some discussion in Act 2. I marvel much what reason led the king, my father, thus without all desert, to reave me half the kingdom which by course of law and nature should remain to me. If you, with uh, stubborn and untamed pride, had set, stood against him in rebelling wise, or if with grudging mind you had envied so slow a sliding of his aged years, or sought before your time to haste the course or fatal death upon his royal head, or stain your stock with murder of your kin, some face of reason might perhaps have seemed to yield some likely cause to spoil ye thus. The reekful gods pour on my cursed head eternal plagues and never dying woes. The hellish prince adjudge my damned ghost to Tantalus's thirst or proud Ixion's wheel, or cruel gripe to gnaw my growing heart to during torments and unquenched flames, if ever I concern so foul a thought to wish his end of life or yet of reign. Now yet your father, O most noble prince, did ever think so foul a thing of you, for he with more than fathers tender love while yet the fates do lend him life to rule, who long might live to see your ruling well, to you, my lord, and to his other son, lo, he resigns his realm and royalty, which never would so wise a prince have done if he had once misdeemed that in your heart there ever lodged so unkind a thought. But tender love, my lord, and settled trust of your good nature and your noble mind, 
made him to place you thus in royal throne and now to give you half his realm to guide yea and that half within abounding store of things that serve to make a wealthy realm in stately cities and in fruitful soil in temperate breathing of the milder heaven in things of needful use which friendly sea transports by traffic from the foreign ports in flowing wealth in honor and in force doth pass the double value of part that porrex hath allotted to his reign such is your case such is your father's love uh, love my friends love wrongs not whom he loves but nay yet wrong is you that giveth you so large a reign ere that course of time bring you to kingdom by descended right which time perhaps might end your time before is this no wrong say you to reave from me my native right of half so great a realm and thus to match his younger son with me in equal power and in as great a degree yea and what son the son whose swelling pride would never yield one point of reverence when i the elder and apparent heir stood in the likelihood to possess the whole yea and that son which from his childish age envieth my honour and doth hate my life what will he now do when his pride his rage the mindful malice of his grudging heart is armed with force with wealth and kingly state was this not wrong Yea, you advised wrong to give so mad the man so sharp a sword to so great peril of so great mishap. Why the open dust to set so large away? Alas, my lord, what grievful thing is this that of your brother you can think so ill? I never saw him utter likely sign whereby a man might see or once misdeem such hate of you, nay, such unyielding pride. Ill is their counsel, shameful be their end, that raising such mistrustful fear in you, sowing the seed of such unkindly hate, travail by reason to destroy you both wise is your brother and of noble hope worthy to wield a large and mighty realm so much a stronger friend have you thereby whose strength is your strength if you agree in one and there we'll just pause okay so we've got a sort of sense of the positions just to remind everyone where we are uh ferex um and uh, has his two uh counselors one pushing one way uh one pushing the other I thought we'd pause before we get to the massive speech um, that's coming up which I think we'll take in, in chunks um, before we uh, go too far with there. Um, a couple of textual issues I've just noticed which I'd hoped I'd started stamping out. Um, so Ferex in your uh, second speech uh, if ever I concerned that should be conceived for so foul a thought. Conceived. Um, otherwise, it's mostly a few minor punctuation things, uh, which we can dance around. So, Ferex, um, where, I think we know where the position of your two councillors are. Where, where mm. is your head at, do we think, from where we, where, where we are with just this, this opening? It feels like... Uh, yeah, it... It sort of well the the way I've been reading it is it sort of feels like he's already slightly made up his mind um, uh, at the beginning that Dorden's having to do quite a lot of work to sort of swing him around. Um, it's it sort of it, it, it to me it does sort of start slightly aggressively. I marvel much what reason led the king. I just can't believe this this the, 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 what he's done. Um, that it seems that he's swaying slightly more towards that that sort of position that he has been wronged. Um, he, he seems fairly quick to cast uh, to, to, to cast um, aspersions on his brother, who I don't think, sorry, I was absent for the original for the original reading, so I'm just scrolling back. We don't see Porex in Act 1, do we? That's Ferex yeah. that we see in Act 1. We've um, met Ferex before, he's been yeah. chatting with, uh, you know... With Videna. Yeah. yeah. You, you are you, you, your mother's favourite. Uh, mm. that's, that's sort of the suggestion here, is that uh, there is favouritism between the two parents uh, mm. going on. Um, 
and you defend yeah. your father quite a lot in the first scene uh whereas in this one um it's it's a slightly different universe yeah um yeah it's interesting that we've kind of met one of the brothers and we haven't met that we haven't met the other one um so that everything that we have to know about Porrex goes on kind of what Ferex is saying here and he's not painting a particularly wonderful picture of him um but he does seem fairly convinced that he's going to have to sort of start I mean, the, the whole the, the pair of scenes together sort of feel like an arms race, kind of sort of feel like, you know, the US and the USSA and the USSR in the 1980s kind of game. We've, we've got to stockpile this in case they do that um, and, and vice versa. And he sort of, the way I've read it, he sort of seems fairly convinced that, that that's what he's going to have to do. Um, mm. um, and it sort of seems to me that, that, that there's having to be more work done um, on the part of... Um, uh, Dorden sort of convincing him that, that daddy has not wronged him. Um, that, that, that I think so far it seems to me that the particular way that I'm reading it that Herman has a slightly easier job because he's sort of saying what Felix wants to hear to my mind. Mm. Um, well there there is um, a case of uh, again a generational element and you know that Ferex and Hermon uh, you know Hermon is 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 you know down as a parasite I, I think or, or a minion um, I forget which word is used uh, it, so he you know he's just he's there you know as he's he's the friend of Ferex um, Dorden is a counselor appointed by the king hmm. Um, so the fact that Ferex and Herman effect, spend the first sort of half page effectively talking to each other and Dorden feels like he's, st he's placed slightly further away. You know, he's watching this exchange rather than being part of it. I mean, that's just my, my initial directorial thought is that Ferex and Herman are talking and Dorden is, 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 is there, but he's not, he's not part of that exchange. Um, other thoughts in the room about uh, uh, about what, what what's going on with Ferex? Um, we can chat about the others as we go as well. But um, uh, any initial thoughts? No is fine. He, 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 he really looked um, angered. He, he looked outrageous uh, right now, and it, it's funny because for you talking about. Um, Dorden as a counselor, because Dorden um, seemed to me a bit more sinuous than than Herman himself. To look like um, more poisonous, but mm. it could be my ear. Yeah, no, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. Is that, that there's mm -hmm. some there is something deliberately slightly poisonous about Herman. Um, um, so let's let's go back to the top of the scene. Let's work through this sort of speech by speech. Let's see what what leaps out at us. Just just the the most obvious things uh, that that come to mind as we go. Ferex, just the first four lines, please. Mm -hmm. I marvel much what reason led the king, my father thus without all desert, to reave me half the kingdom, which by course of law and nature should remain to me. So it's that thing. It's a nice bursty open. Mm. entry line isn't it you know if if it's full of anger um I, i'm 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 not just going to be giving terrible direction of you know just play angry <laughs> just play <do>. angry <laughs> um but just that sense of momentum to it um mm. it's i think to me it's also the the, the sort of it is literally an omg it's kind of like yeah. I, I'm not, I can't I, I can't I'll moderate my language, but I, I can't believe it. Like, kind of, this is, and it's it's the fact it's going against law and nature. It's like, why? It's it's upsetting the natural order, which I guess is what what you know happens throughout this this play. Um, mm. And it's sort of interesting that he's kind of he's focusing on the half that he hasn't got, which I suppose is the whole the whole point of the conflict and, and sort of what we all do. He has got half, you know, as is pointed out later, he's got the lovely half of the kingdom with, with all sorts of other wonderful things, but he's only focusing on what he hasn't got, not what he has got. It's the human condition, I suppose. Um, mm. Yes, reave me half the kingdom, re re should remain to me. There's the, the my me and me, uh, mm. it's, you're, you're quite self, I mean, to be fair, it is something that's been done to you, but um, it's just, there's, there's, there's something there. Um, okay, her, uh, any, oh yes, go, 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 please. I was just gonna say also the emphasis on um, reason or cause, you know, I marvel much what reason led the king without all dessert 
um, implying that there could be a context in which this would be acceptable behavior, but he hasn't met that level uh -huh. yet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can imagine a sort of offstage conversation going, kind of Marvel, much what reason? Mm. Yeah. They've got the news, but they don't understand why it's happening. Uh, love that. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's see what uh, whether Herman gives you a decent answer. Um, Herman, next speech, please. If you, with stubborn and intent pride, had stood against him in rebelling wise, or if with grudging mind you have envied so slow a sliding of his aged years, or sought before your time to haste the course of fatal death upon his royal head, or stained your stock with murder of your kin, some face of reason might perhaps have seemed to yield some likely cause to spoil ye thus. He gives four reasons, uh, <laughs> potential <laughs> reasons. <laughs> All of them very bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's also that, that, that hint of maybe he's senile, uh, so slow as sliding of his aged years um, as well, uh, you know, with all these oars. Um, to spoil ye thus. That's an interesting word. Um, to ruin, ruin, uh, do, do da the air, despoil ye. Um, other, other thoughts about Herman? I mean, it, I mean, it could be, we could be being unfair that Herman is actually, this is all perfectly legitimate and it's fine. It's not an unreasonable thing, but as mm, It does sort of lend itself to that. I mean, the sort of, dynasty style hyperbole of all the things going up that you 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 could have done just from you know being a bit pissed that he's senile to kind of literally clobbering people and, and murdering them I mean, there, there does seem to be some, and because it, it's written in that quite i think we talked about the sort of like legalese construction of this didn't we when we, when mm. we read through it, and those those continuous clauses that add one more bit that it's sort of ramped up in terms of hyperbole does feel to me like he's sort of just it is slightly seeing where ferex is and kind of pushing him a bit further with all these outrageous things that he could have done, but he hasn't done. He's been a model son, you know, it's... Um, <laughs> you could have it, it slaughtered someone, but you didn't. Uh, there's no reason for this. <laughs> Stephen? Uh, I was thinking about Spoil and, and Reeve, um, because uh, where I live, you know, there, there was something called the Border Reavers. It's a, it's a long period of Anglo-Scottish history, which is basically raiding. And so uh, the Reavers are people who will just sort of charge 30 miles down the road and just uh, take spoil. And uh, the, the way uh, he, Ferex is talking about it is, is as if he's got it all ready and, and he's being invaded by somebody who is making off with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so Reave and spoil seem to me to sort of talk to one another as words there. There's a kind of through thought um, which is not that I should get it one day, but it's mine already and he's mm. taking it off me. Mm. Well, th 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 that suggestion with Herman, you know, grudging, um, or if we're grudging mind, you would envied so slow a sliding of his aged years. You know, you've been sitting here watching, you've been perhaps taking on some responsibilities, you've been doing the job, um, and you've been doing it without complaint. Uh, you, haven't, uh, you haven't been complaining about uh, any anything like that. Um, you could have done. I think that one out of the list is the one that doesn't fit with the others, the envy, because envy isn't something you do, it's something you feel, mm. right? And, a, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, it's a thought crime, isn't it, as opposed to an act, isn't it? Um. <laughs> and I, I'm not sure, I mean, to me, it doesn't suggest that, that Garber Duck is, um, is senile yet or you know this he envies that it's slow right that he that he is not declining faster mm. yes yes he, he just won't so, die yeah <laughs> he's still in he's still in full um, possession of his faculties what's wrong with what's up with that <laughs> uh any uh any more thoughts 
Okay, Ferex, next speech it. The reekful gods pour on my cursed head eternal plagues and never dying woes. The hellish prince adjudge my damned ghost to Tantalus's thirst or proud Ixion's wheel, or cruel gripe to gnaw my growing heart to during torments and unquenched flames, if ever I conceived so foul a thought to wish his end of life or yet of reign. Oh, you're really, really, you absolutely definitely don't don't want the him to die young. Lady you? doth protest too much. <laughs> <laughs> It's slightly overstated, isn't it? It's not only just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like literally go to Tartarus and be chained to a rock and have your liver gnawed out if, if I've ever once had a bad thought about him. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it, 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 it is totally hyperbolic as, as, as far as I read it. I, I mean, it, and, you know, if we're going with, I mean, the suggestion that we've we've got with Ferex is that you know he's he is an has an open, honest face. Um, that you know that that you know maybe it's maybe it's all absolutely true. You you know it, it, on face value, you genuinely don't think that it's your wicked mm. counselor who's trying to push that thought into your mind. Um, that you 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 uh, you you could have cause to be annoyed with your father beyond what he's just done um but it, it is throwing up that again that why isn't it why i've i've never done anything wrong to him why i i, I would never this is how far i would never do him wrong mm. um I, one of the things that strikes me about that speech as well is the the structure um almost as we saw before given that um it's almost like burying the lead, right? You're you're waiting to find out what it is that he would be punished for, and you don't know until the very end. Mm. Ah, if ever I conceive so foul a thought, I, until then I'm waiting. Like what? What are you waiting for? What's the what's the crime that you're wishing the punishment for, or not wishing? Mm. It's very much like a German sentence where you've got to wait for the, the bit at the end that gives you, that contextualises the rest of it. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's talking about what Hermann said before. I said he sort of said, gives four examples, but in a sense he doesn't. He just gives the same example in a slightly different way um, mm. leading to this, doesn't he? Um, so so um, mm. in a sense he is, he is holding on to that, that primary thought. Um, uh, all the way through um, on, on my cursed head. Um, absolutely, all the things, all the terrible things will fall on you. Um, I, I, uh, other thoughts before we move on to the the, the next little bit? Um, I'm sort of thinking now about those three that, those three exchanges. You know, it, it's all very. Again, it feels like it has a forward momentum to it. It doesn't feel like, you know, that it's sat down and we're having a sensible discussion or anything. You know, it's not like... Uh, it no, it, very, it feels very dramatic. I mean, yeah. he's, he's, you know, whether he is a genuine open-faced person or whether he is, he is a terrible conniving person, it's, 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 it's overdramatic. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, um, the choice of vocabulary. And, so, so, you know, they're, they're following him. Herman's following you closely. Dorden is perhaps just come through the door. Um, so that, that becomes the task. If you are very demonstratively moving around and pacing back and forth and, and being very, very up there and out there, then Dorden's job here is presumably to bring you back down to earth. So, Dorden, let's, uh, let's do a, a chunk out of this. Maybe not the whole speech. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the, the opening. Now yet your father, O most noble prince, did ever think, think so foul a thing of you. For he, with more than father's tender love, while yet the fates do lend him life to rule, who long might live to see your ruling well, to you, my lord, and to his other son, lo, he resigns his realm and royalty, which never would so wise a prince have done if he had once misdeemed that in your heart there ever lodge so unkind a thought. Okay, that's a, that's a good opening gambit, um, isn't it, from Dorton? Um, absolutely, he never thought, it, it's not punishment. That seems to be the thing that's getting to you, isn't it? 
Mm. The kings might be punishing you for something. And Dorden's first thing is to say, absolutely no, that's not what's going on. He's going to give you half his kingdom and also, you know, he's going to give the kingdom to you and to the other son. Um, just sort of throws that in at underarm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, he is going to give you the realm, you know, part of it. Um, and he wouldn't do that if he didn't trust you. Daddy definitely trusts you. Yes, I like that it emphasizes that it's more than father's tender love. It's it's not it's it's beyond what you know what you might even expect the best um, parent to do. And I do like the line that's sort of parenthetically thrown in about who long might live to see your ruling well. Mm. Um, I, I quite like um, yes, realm and royalty as well. It, it, he's sort of splitting that, isn't it? It, it isn't just about. Um, the, the lands, as it were. This is a promotion. Mm. Royalty is, means promotion. You know, the, the father is handing over something to you that you haven't got. Uh, so it, it's it's no, it's half full all the way. Think of what you're gaining, not mm. what you should have had, mm. because what you should, you know, that would be if he died. And say, so, yeah, but he hasn't died. That's the point. He's giving it to you now. Mm. Yes, because, you know, we've, we had a debate in the previous act uh, with Gorbadoc, um going through, you know, should I give up my kingdom now and split it between my two sons? And the various impositions were, were, were placed out there. And yeah, Dordan's absolutely right. that We've had this council. I'm here as your counsellor. Uh, I'm here to give you guidance. This is what happened. Um, other thoughts about Dordan so far? I think it's interesting that he is emphasizing that it's something that the father is doing, not something that the king is doing. Mm. And I think that um, it was Ferrex's first two lines where he said, I marvel much what reason led the king, my father, right? And kind of like, oh, these are similar, but they're separate at the same time. Hmm. Uh, you know, and uh, yes, so uh, yes, knee your father's fathers. Um, uh, and it, also, it's it's the fact that Dorden is using O most noble prince uh, mm -hmm. to you, my lord. Um, does Herman use any such language like that at all? Just looking back, um, I don't think he does. He just talks to Ferrex like an equal. Um, so that contrast is really interesting, actually just in terms of the nature of their relationships. Dordans is a, a, is a counsellor. You know, there's a certain distance and, you know, respect for Ferrex's position. I don't think Herman has that. He's a mate. Mm. It's nice as well to just going back to that father point that actually that ties into what Stephen was saying about the royalty, that actually if he long might live to see all ruling well, that he's going to give up that part of himself to you and presumably retire to civilian life and just be a father rather than the father and the king. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, anything else before we move on? Okay, let's finish the speech then, uh, Stephen. Uh, but tender love. But tender love, my lord, and settled trust of your good nature and your noble mind made him to place you thus in royal throne and now to give you half his realm to guide, yea, and that half within abounding store of things that serve to make a wealthy realm in stately cities and in fruitful soil in temperate breathing of the milder heaven in things of needful use which friendly sea transports by traffic from the foreign ports in flowing wealth in honor and in force doth pass the double value of part that porex hath allotted to his reign such is your case such is your father's love yeah as uh, as you've already pointed out you, you're getting the best deal you're getting the best deal there you're getting all the good stuff you know um uh i was going to just miss a uh, malign a couple of uh, uh, english cities i won't do that now uh <laughs> but uh yeah you're, you're 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 getting all the lovely places um wealthy places as well um and we've got it it's interesting that we've got um 
uh, from foreign parts or foreign ports um, are two uh, variants uh, that I've got available there. So uh, it might be ports, it might be parts. Um, uh, it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. It it's a, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, but tender love, going with the love thing again. Mm -hmm. It's you know uh, leading with that, leading with the love, and then the rational list of good things. Um, I, you know, Dorden knows you're possibly in an emotional state, shall we say? <laughs> I uh, I quite like the fact as well where the line and now to give your half his realm to guide before yay sort of almost feels like it's it's preempting an objection mm. from uh from ferrex that because he's just emphasized half your realm to guide uh, yay and that half with you know and and it's the good half i know it's the half but it's the good half um that it almost feels that, that he sort of keeps going because ferrex is about to counter that with will you put your finger on it it's half the realm to guide it's not the whole realm to guide um if yeah yeah no that that's that's nice um because it again it also breaks up the the the, the, the flow of thing um mm. you, it, there's a couple of points where actually that throughout that you could be trying to interrupt mm. um and that 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 feels like it's got um that's got legs um okay let's let's run this page from the top unless anyone's got uh, additional thoughts uh before we do that but what i'd like to do is run in a moment this page uh, with lots of energy and, and focus and emotion and all over the place, Ferex. Um, <laughs> and Stephen, uh, as Dorden, talk him down. And don't be afraid, Ferex, to try and interrupt and break in. I like that as an idea. I think that, that works really nicely. Um, and just, uh, and Herman, you know, just, just give it, give, you know, really, really stoke him up, um, perhaps, with, with what you're doing, um, mm -hmm. all, your, all your wheedling-ness. Uh, uh, but keep keep him keep him uh, keep him thinking on all the bad things because that's all you do. You're talking. You just keep repeating negative things: death, dead, death, dead, dead um, murder. It's it's all negatives you're talking in, um, uh, and things. Any additional thoughts before we do that? Nope. Okay, let's uh, run that from the top. Let's just run that page uh, into the 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 the, 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 the Ferrex's next line after that. Uh, it's just as the little objection. I'd like to hear that line said before we pause. I marvel much what reason led the king, my father, thus without all desert, to weave me half the kingdom, which by course of law and nature should remain to me. If you, with stubborn and untamed pride, had stood against him in rebellion wise, or if with grudging mind you have envied so slow a sliding of his aged years, or sought before your time to haste the course of fatal death upon his royal head, or stain your stock with murder of your kin, some face of reason might perhaps have seemed to yield some likely cause to spoil ye thus. <laughs> the weakful gods pour on my cursed head eternal plagues and never dying woes. The hellish prince adjudge my damned ghost to Tantalus's thirst or proud Ixion's wheel or cruel gripe to gnaw my growing heart to during torments and unquenched flames. If ever I conceived so foul a thought to wish his end of life or yet of reign. Now yet your father, O oh most noble prince, did ever think so foul a thing of you. For he, with more than father's tender love, while yet the fates do lend him life to rule, who long might live to see your ruling well, to you, my lord, and to his other son, lo, uh, he, res he resigns his realm and royalty, which never would so wise a prince have done if he had once misdeemed that in your heart there ever lodged so unkind a thought. Mm. But tender love, my lord, settled trust of your good nature and your noble mind made him to place you thus in royal throne and now to give you half his realm oh, to guide. And, yea, yea, and that half within abounding store of things that serve to make a wealthy realm in stately cities in fruitful soil in temperate breathing of the milder heaven in things of needful use which friendly sea transports by traffic from the foreign parts 
in flowing wealth, in honor and in force, does pass the double value of part that Porex <laughs> allotted to his reign. Such is your case, such is your father's love. Ah, love, my friends. Love wrongs not whom he loves. Now yet wrong is you that giveth you so large a reign ere that course of time bring you to kingdom by descended right, which time perhaps might end your time before. Is this no wrong, say you, to reave from me my native right of half so great a realm? and thus to match his younger son with me in equal power and in as great a degree. Yea, and what son? The son whose swelling pride would never yield one point of reverence when I, the elder and apparent heir, stood in the likelihood to possess the whole. Yea, and that son which from his childish age envieth my honour and doth hate my life. And what will he do now? When his pride, his rage, the mindful malice of his grudging heart is armed with force, with wealth and kingly state. Was this not wrong? Yea, you advised wrong mm. to give so mad a man so sharp a sword to so great peril of so great mishap. Why the open does to set so large a way? Alas, my lord, what griefful thing is this that of your Brother, you can think so ill. I, I never saw him but a likely sign where that my man might see or once misdeem such hate of you. Nay, such unyielding pride. Ill is their counsel, shameful be their end, that raising such mistrustful fear in you, sowing the seed of such unkindly hate, travail by reason to destroy you both. Wise is your brother, and of noble hope, worthy to wield a, a large and mighty realm, with so much a stronger friend of you thereby, whose strength is your strength, if you agree in one. If nature... Sorry, I'll just pause you there. Um, okay, uh, I, 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 I let that run on because it felt like it was being productive and it was, it was good. I like the momentum there. Um, noticing interesting things as we did that um ferex you've never caught he's not your brother is he ever he's his father's no, other he's, son his yes. younger son what yes. son the son that son i mean there's no brotherly love there at all no um uh, uh that that was fascinating and, and i just love the art my friends my friends you know it's it's it, you're almost doing that to the gallery aren't you <laughs> <laughs> love doesn't hurt do, you know you don't love wrongs not whom he loves um mm. i mean that's a that's a that's a circular s a sentence um <laughs> Yes, it sounds profound, doesn't it? Or it sounds like something that might be in the gospel somewhere. I imagine. But it, 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 it is also just quite petulant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and Jordan just cl 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 sort of finishes it off, and he wrongeth you that giveth you so lot. He doesn't, you know, he gives, he's giving you a lot. Uh, I mean, how, how often have we seen this as a plot in terms of, you know, inheritance plots uh, in, in drama through the ages? Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's when, when you start talking about the nitty gritty and the money and, and things, that mm. things start turning nasty very, very quickly. And it, and it really is that, that principle, isn't it? Um, you, you are going to take this personally if you don't get the whole kingdom and he shows any favoritism. Um, Yes, because he really sticks to that argument, doesn't it? That's my native right. That is what should be happening. That is what would be happening. That's that's the way the law is written. And any deviation from that, I don't care that I've got the nice bit. Um, I should have the crappy bits as well. Like it, it should be the whole thing. It's, it's, it's really kind of at the one point where I sort of felt like I was being slightly won over was was the the, the, the towards the end where we stopped about you know your. The, 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 your your brother that Porex could be an ally 
and cement your strength, which sort of linked together with the memory of the foreign parts, the foreign ports, possibly is about is about to kind of pour oil on my troubled waters because it seems notice, notable that I sort of don't come back with anything there. That that Herman has to jump in just where we left where we left off. That maybe there is a point where he does start to come around because I think I mean if he played this whole scene as as a sort of flouncy drama queen, it becomes very tiring to watch after a while I think that yeah there's got there's got to be a point where he is sort of hooked and I wonder whether that's whose strength is your strength it's kind of it's it's blowing smoke up his butt isn't it it's kind of going yeah you, you've got the good part of the kingdom and you could be a strong ally this could be a, a strong kingdom strength together um sort of felt like it started to win me over a little bit mm. diet well, they're picking up on because you you do that with the uh, Matt uh, is armed with force, um, mm. you know, and, and they pick up on that of of arm and and um, and both Herman and Dor but you know, Dorden clearly doesn't like Herman at all, does he? <laughs> <laughs> the alas, my lord speech is is, you know, there's a very pointed him over there saying bad mm. things. Shut him up. Um, um such uh, I, uh, it's just um raising such mistrustful fear in you sowing the seed of such an un, un, unkindly hate i mean he's 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 not actually saying it directly at herman i don't think he, but it, by implication that seems to be going on mm -hmm. and this is all taking place at, just sorry just to remind myself that, because there's been that dumb show beforehand hasn't there of the the two glasses so i guess stylistically whether that was tied to this somehow the clear glass and the poison chalice ah uh, oh well you you, you you don't want to actually get into what the dump that dumb show is about because uh, there's there's uh, there is um some variation actually uh right that. okay um that that is possibly a re rewrite of what was originally presented right um but yeah it's also deeply uh, obscure uh, its meaning. I, I, I think let's not go with the dumb show as a good motivator at this time. Um, oh, okay. I mean, in terms of, I was looking at it in terms of directorial to make it, if you're going to include it, you've got to have to make it sense to an audience. You can't yeah. have five pages of program notes. So whether you have <laughs> one glass that's one glass that's red and one glass that's blue and one of the councillors wears red and one of the councillors wears blue, thinking as, you know, the thinking average member of the public watching it, that says to me, oh, I kind of get that. That's what's going that on. That I like. That I like, if actually. You're, if, you're, if you're conveying the message of one person poison, pouring poison in his ear and one person trying to be good, I, I think you have to make it that clear for a modern audience because I yeah. forget that I'm coming from a position of privilege where I've read this and you know had years at university reading this stuff and and understand verse drama and trying to think of how you would make that read for a an average audience if there was such a thing yeah well i mean <laughs> yeah you're right you've got to throw the audience a crumb i mean it, yes. it does sort of get explained in the chorus at the end of the the act mm -hmm. but um as a piece it, it is the most opaque of the of the dumb shows that we right. have in this play uh the others are actually relatively straightforward Yes, I like the one with all the armed men shooting one another. That was yeah, easy to understand. Great. Great. Um, <laughs> so if, if we're thinking about that in terms of staging then, um, if we're talking about that at this point? Oh yeah, go for it. I'm, I mean, I'm just picturing, uh, you know, like if we have the traditional psychomachia kind of uh, going on, um, when we first uh, started talking about the scene, we were saying kind of we're, we're foregrounding Ferex and, um, and what's his name? Herman. Um, and and Dorden is over on the side, uh, but that kind of doesn't convey the same kind of like, we're both here talking one in each ear. Mm. So, That's what I'd originally thought when I read it, it was like yeah. the almost cartoon angel devil kind of on the... Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so is that is that something that we would want to visualize developing during the scene, having having Dorden kind of like moving into that framework. Um, I, 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 I do see that the, the Dorden would physically in, in, intervene in some, some sense and, you know, would want to separate Ferrex from, from Herman because he's obviously poison. Um, I, 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 that's sort of how I'm see, seeing this going is that 
Um, I mean, when we first read it, I think we were talking about them them sitting basically in front of the PlayStation. You know, the Herman and uh, uh, and Ferex are just sort of were doing it. It was it was much less animated. I seem to recall having conversations <laughs> along those lines. And then you know, Jordan was in the background, just going. Now, I think we should talk sensibly about these things. Um, <laughs> uh, it think... also reminds me of that sort of um, who's the character in Lord of the Rings, uh, the sort of grimmer worm tongue thing <laughs> that the monarch ends up kind of i can't remember the monarch's name because i'm not a massive talking junkie but the, 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 um that, the, him in the, him in the sort of throne with the, the grimmer sort of over the top of the throne and the, the other councillors sort of more physically distanced um from him i guess yes yeah 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 there's 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 there's, there's, lo there's a lot of worm tongue in in herman i don't know if i don't i say i i, I also want to do sympathy for herman um i don't know why <laughs> i want to do that but I, I don't know that he is a bad person per se i think he's just he's just a a, a reflection for you i don't think he 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 hasn't got an agenda except massaging your ego so he gets more mm. stuff that's what parasites do yes. um so I don't know that he has an agenda beyond uh, beyond uh, ticking things over. Uh, we've 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 gone into this in a lot more detail than I actually intended. So uh, I'm I, what I'm going to do is I'm afraid I'm going to skip ahead because uh, I want to do get I want to get to the next scene, but I want to read all of Ferrex's lines in this. So what we'll do is if we can go to um, page eighteen in my script. Uh, Dorden's speech, oh heaven, was there ever heard or known? We'll actually go a few lines before that, but that's sort of the area. Uh, so we're going to take it as read that Herman has done a massive speech saying, <laughs> um, take your right, kill your brother, la 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 la. Uh, we'll do the last few lines of that. For, uh, uh, no, no, uh, if you could do the last four lines, I think. Um, actually, last six lines. Uh, but if you like not yet so hot device. Uh, you're muted at the moment, sir. But if you like not yet so hot device, nee list to take such vantage of the time. But though with great peril of your state, you will not be the first that shall invade. Assemble yet your force for your defense and for your safety stand upon your guard. Was there ever heard or known so wicked counsel to a noble prince? Let me, my lord, disclose unto your grace this heinous tale, what mischief it contains. Your father's death, your brother's and your own, your present murder and eternal share. Hear me, O king, suffer not to sink so high a treason in your princely breast. The mighty gods forbid that ever I should once conceive such mischief in my heart. Although my brother has bereft my realm and bear perhaps to me an hateful mind, shall I revenge it with his death therefore? Or shall I so destroy my father's life that gave me life? The gods forbid, I say, cease you to speak so any more to me. May you, my friend, with answer once repeat so foul a tale, in silence let it die. What lord or subject shall have hope at all that under me they safely shall enjoy their goods, their honours, lands and liberties, with whom neither one only brother bears, nor father dearer could enjoy their lives? But Sith, I fear my younger brother's rage, and Stith, perhaps some other man may give some like advice to move his grudging head at mine estate, which counsel may perchance take greater force with him than this with me. I will in secret so prepare myself, as if his malice of his lust to reign break forth with arms or sudden violence, I may withstand his rage and keep mine own. And we'll just pause there because you exit at that point and Dorden is left alone. Um, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of things in there. Mm. Um, uh, and it's a shame we're, we're sort of having to skip ahead a little bit. Um, but it's the, 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 the crux of what um, uh, that um, you get from Herman at the, the end of that speech is, you know, you've got to attack him to win. You've got to fight. You know, we were talking about the East-West sort of um, uh, USSR kind of thing. 
it's very like that. It's sort of um, we've got to attack first, otherwise we'll never win. And uh, and um, and he, uh, he he his speech is full of that. And Dorden is is clear to translate what that actually means. Hmm. I think that's 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 so that's so strong. You know, you, you're you've moved from this isn't fair. The argument has moved from this isn't fair to you're going to have to kill your family. Um, and that's a big shift. And that's a big shift. Um, and, you know, Dorden must be stepping in at that point to try and convince you um, and, and get that through to you. Um, uh, I, I just want to go through uh, any, any thoughts about um, your response to that, Ferrix, as well, your final speech in this scene, your final speech in the play, we should point out. It's interesting because he's sort of in in the course of it. He almost seems to do, if not a full three hundred and sixty, at, at least a good sort of two hundred degree revolve. In that, I I, I do think that that um, uh, that sort of end of Dorden's speech there actually does finally hit home. I mean, it, it's spelt out so clearly that not only is it your, you know, even if you didn't care about your father's death and your brothers, it's your own your own, you are going to die and you're going, your, your, your reputation will die with it eternally, your eternal shame. Um, a, a, a interesting as well that he, he's, he's calling him my lord and O oh, king, that he actually refers to him as, as the king, like, you know, if anything's going to tap into his, if he is someone that needs flattery or kind of, you know, is, is insecure in his status, that is going to make him, him listen. Um, and, and, and it, it sort of seems interesting in his response to mighty gods forbid that ever I should once conceive such mischief from my heart. Oh my God, no, 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 I'm not going to, I wouldn't kill anyone. Like, I'm not going to kill anyone. I'm not going to kill myself. Although my brother has, you know, even though, I, I said I wouldn't mention it again, but even though that's happened, it, it feels like someone who said, well, I won't, I won't mention it, but I'm just bringing it up so you know that even though that's the case, I'm, I'm, um, I'm fine with it. Um, um, but then by the end of that speech, he's sort of, he, the, the but Sith sort of seems to be the sort of turning point there. Uh, I, I fear my younger brother's rage that actually, oh no, oh my God, what if, hang on, what if this exact same situation is happening with him, that he's got good angel and bad devil telling him this and he listens to bad devil in a way that I wouldn't do, um, that, 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 that he's weaker than I am and the bad devil prevails on him. And he believes that argument and he even now is preparing to drop a bomb on me, uh, to, to go back to the USA and the, 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 to the USSR. Um, and it did make me wonder whether there was any mileage in, in this in terms of staging and actually having the same people, uh, you know, that, that Ferex and Porex are just the same person. Um, that, 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 that sort of highlights the theme of a kingdom riven within itself and warring, at war with itself. Um, that he is imagining, as, as far as I read it, this exact same situation playing out in Porrox's palace, but Porrox giving his ear to the bad angel, which he doesn't think he's doing, which of course he is. <laughs> mm. That makes sense. It's really complicated. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's partly the reason I wanted you to read the two, the two parts, one after the other, <laughs> is, uh, is to see whether that feels right or not. I mean, they never meet. We never mm. see them meet, uh, unless we do it in dumb show. Um, part of me is also tempted to see what happens if the two scenes could almost, they, they, they're not the same length, so it's not like you can make them overlap, um, but maybe to dart left, right stage sort of sense uh, might be quite interesting. Uh, oh, that would be really interesting, trying to rearrange the, the text and actually see if you could mm. interleave them. Yeah. I mean, that, that, let, let's go through Ferex's last speech in that scene again, because there's... Mm -hmm. There's a there's several interesting things about it. I mean, it's that those half lines, um, you know, so Fowler's tale, in silence let it die. I mean, I think you can lean into the opportunity to, to pause um, mm -hmm. and and think about what you're going to do because everyone's given their counsel. You are the king. He Dorden has just told you you are the king. Uh, be a king. Make a decision. Um, so uh, let's give uh, you some motivation. Dorden, give, uh, give your speech into that. Um, 
and then we'll uh, we'll 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 see what comes out of Ferex. Bill, oh, heaven, was there ever heard or known so wicked counsel to noble prince? Let me, my lord, disclose unto your grace this heinous tale. What mischief it contains! Your father's death, your brother's, and your own, your present murder and eternal shame. Hear me, O oh king, and suffer not to think so high a treason in your princely breast. The mighty gods forbid that ever I should once conceive such mischief in my heart. Although my brother has bereft my realm, and bear perhaps to me an hateful mind, shall I revenge it with his death therefore? Or shall I so destroy my father's life that gave me life? The gods forbid, I say, cease you to speak so any more to me. May you, my friend, with answer once repeat so foul a tale. In silence let it die. What lord or subject shall have hope at all that under me they safely shall enjoy their goods, their honours, lands and liberties, with whom neither one only brother bears, nor father dearer could enjoy their lives? But Sith, I fear my younger brother's rage, and Sith, perhaps some other man may give some like advice to move his scrudging head at mine estate, which counsel may perchance to take greater force with him than this with me. I will in secret so prepare myself, as if his malice of his lust to reign break forth with arms or sudden violence, I may withstand his rage and keep mine own. And thus he exits. Yeah, that's much, much clearer. He doesn't want to be doing this course of action, but he feels he's being forced into it. And he is telling his mate to shut up. Mm. Um, so he's actually showing a certain level of wisdom here. It's not like he is a foolish man going down a foolish road. He knows it's a trap. Um, and, and he sort of feels like he hasn't got the choice, that there isn't a choice. Um, but to go down that road. Um, Which sort of feels like he's, he's sort of talking himself into a compromise slightly. I, I will in secret, so prepare myself. So I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to make a big show, which ultimately probably ends up being worse because, you know, it's sort of, we've been doing that clandestinely. Um, but that I, I'll, I'll sort of try and have the best of both worlds in a compromise that, that isn't really a great one. You know, I, I will behave myself, and, but, but I'm going to prepare a stash of weapons just in case yeah um, never plays out well <laughs> well clearly you don't prepare well enough because you're you you you, you are <laughs> going to die um but that's fine that's fine uh no we don't know that actually we pretty much do know that <laughs> the play constantly tells us what's about to happen um uh so that that, that i find fascinating i would love to linger and go over more of that but this is about ferrex and porex so i'm afraid uh, we will move on to porex now um so act two scene two um similar setup it's a shorter scene so we'll, what we'll do is we'll actually just read through the whole scene um and see what's happening with brother number two please and is it thus and doth he so prepare against his brother as his mortal foe? And now, while yet his aged father lives, neither regards he him nor fears he me? Woe would he have, and he shall have it so. I saw myself the great prepared store of horse, of armor, and of weapons there, to bring I to my lord, reported tales, without the ground of seeing and such truth, no secret squirrels run about his court to bring the name of you my lord in hate each man almost can now debate the cause and ask a reason of so great a wrong why he so noble and so wise a prince is as unworthy left his heritage and why the king misled by crafty means divided thus his land from course upright the wiser sort hold down their grateful heads each man withdraws from talk and company of those that have been known to favor you you hide the mischief of their meaning there 
rumors are spread of your preparing here. The rascal numbers of the unskillful sorts are filled with monstrous tales of you and yours in secret. I was counseled by my friends to haste me thence and brought you, as you know, letters from those that both can truly tell and would not write unless they knew it well. My lord. Yet ere you move unkindly war, send to your brother to demand the cause. Perhaps some traitorous tales have filled his ears with false reports against your noble grace, which once disclosed shall end the growing strife that else not stayed with wise foresight in time shall hazard both your kingdoms and your lives. Send to your father Ake, he shall appease your kindled minds and rid you of this fear. Rid me of fear? I fear him not at all. No will to him, nor to my father send, if danger were for one to tarry there. Think ye if safety to return again. In mischiefs such as Ferex now intends, the wanted courteous laws to messengers are not observed, which in just war they use. Shall I so hazard any one of mine? Shall I betray my trusty friend to him that hath disclosed his treason unto me? Let him entreat that fears, I fear him not. Or shall I to the king my father send? Yea, and send now while such a mother lives that loves my brother and that hateth me. Shall I give leisure by my fond delays to Ferex to oppress me all unaware? I will not, but I will invade his realm and seek the traitor prince within his court. Mischief for mischief is a due reward. His wretched head shall pay the worthy price of this his treason and his hate to me. Shall I abide, entreat, and send, and pray, and hold my yield and throat to traitor's knife? While I, with valiant mind and conquering force, might rid myself of foes and win a realm, yea, rather, when I have the wretch's head, than to the king my father will I send, the bootless case may yet appeal his wrath. If not, I will defend me as I may. Lo, here to the end of these two youthful kings, the father's death, the reign of their two realms, do most unhappy state of counsellors, that light on so unhappy lords and times, that neither can their good advice be heard. Yet must they bear the blames of ill success, but I will to the king their father haste, ere this mischief come to that likely end, that if the mindful wrath of wreakful gods, since mighty Ilion's fall not yet appeased with these poor remnants of the Trojan name, have not determinedly unmoved fate out of this realm to raise the British line by good advice, by awe of father's name, by force of wiser lords, this kindled hate, may yet be quenched ere yet ere it consume us all. Robert, you're mute. mute. Robert. <laughs> Robert, you still muted by yourself. I'm talking to myself there. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, clearly we can't run the two scenes at uh, the same time because they do follow actively on from each other tinder has you know gone out as a spy and he's seen the nuclear weapons <laughs> and um and is uh, you know is is you know he's got a point and it, it's um you know you've been got all this news and philander is doing a desperate attempt to say mm -hmm. oh no it's, it's maybe it's not true maybe it's not true i've got the dossier i've got the dossier <laughs> um maybe it's not true uh, the, the only bit actually where I, I think it might work, you run the two things together. If if Philander and uh, Dorden uh, meet in a bar after the two scenes, <laughs> and they're they're sort of the, the two speeches sort of overlap, you know, go. We told them, didn't listen, didn't listen. <laughs> um. L there's so much in there. I mean, I'd, your your porex was immediately more youthful. I, I liked that. Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a much. I mean, this is the first time we've met porex. We haven't met porex at all. Um, and he's um, he's got a bit of a temper. Would we say yeah, that? Yeah, they just in general seems less. Um, less gravitas to the scene like particularly with the way that we've worked on that first bit that actually 
there is a degree of kind of sway and maybe it goes from that kind of first explosion into him taking time and pausing and having a thought process and maybe realizing that it is a trap and and you know whatever way is not going to be the best way um there's there, yeah there seems to be it seems to be a more di direct line in, in this his kind of you know the line like rid me of fear i fear him not at all it's like well you said fear all i heard was fear and i don't fear him um <laughs> it's a bit more of a a bit more of a um an explosion, even at the beginning, that string of questions, is it thus that he said for his brother's mortal foe, fear not me, what would, what would he have? Which is going to be one of those lines an actor will absolutely hate, because there's no way of saying that it doesn't sound like Yoda from Star Wars. What would he have? <laughs> what would he have? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, yeah, he, he does seem much more sort of... And have it so he shall. <laughs> yes, to go with it's a trap in the first scene, you've got it bookended yes. by, by Star Wars quiz. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, and he's sort of written it, that sort of big speech that he, uh, that he does, um, sort of piles thing on, you know, thing on thing, and brings in, brings in mother as well. Um, mm. um, that was my brother that hated me. And again, that's following on. I mean, all these clues are actually matching. It's interesting because we were discussing the other day about the mother. You know, uh, how 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 overtly is she preferring her the 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 the, the elder son? And, you know, it's clearly it. Everybody knows it. You know, it's not it's not a, a hidden thing. Um, and actually, I, I've, what I've I've liked so far is you know, in terms of Ferex, is that when we first read Ferex's part, he came across as. Um, two very different characters between his first scene and his second scene. And actually, I think we found, even though we haven't looked at the first scene today, that sort of middle ground that actually he is a more temperate and more uh, open person who, you know, is persuaded actually quite reasonably into a bad course of action. Mm. Um, I would say it's a bad course of action. The better course of action might have been to have got more weapons. Um, <laughs> I, I, I hate to say that that is potentially where this play is pushing us. Uh, <laughs> He was too cautious. He should have just killed his brother. Uh, play would have ended so much better. Um... I mean, I suppose also in terms of in terms of historical precedent, or to go back to what Ferex says about you know sort of right and reason and what have you, that actually Porex and and correct me if I'm wrong because this is historically I'm, I don't know as much about this this period as, as other people, but that actually Porex has probably done rather well out of this because I imagine. Under normal circumstances, Gorbaduck would have died and the kingdom would have just passed down to Ferex. Yep. So actually, where Ferex kind of thinks, well, I've been built to half of what I should have had, Porex is actually kind of like, oh, oh, I've got something I probably wouldn't have had, so I probably am going to have to rush to defend it because people are going to want to take that away from me because there'll be people saying, you know, it's, it's, it, he shouldn't have had it anyway. Um, I suppose that they're, they're coming from slightly different different places ferrix can probably afford more thinking space than porex because there will be enough people thinking he's hard done by i suppose um uh yeah i mean we we, we had this uh we have had this discussion about you know the, the the logic of the time when the play was written yes the the elder son would get the kingdom and the the younger son would become a priest or something uh you know or or, or that there were sort of graduated uh places in society of course within the logic of the play uh, it, within the the historical narrative of the play, um, kingship and the passing of kings might, was was potentially a much more complicated uh, process. Um, you know uh, that you, uh, a kingdom might be passed down by by you know acclamation rather than uh, by by descent and things like that, um, which is something to think about in terms of the universe that we are trying to create on stage. Um, and we had that very much last session. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, um, again, he opens with a question. Um, Ferex and Porrex, um, Ferex opens with a, I marvel and, you know, and is it thus? Um, uh, this feels more stunned around the conference table with the dossiers, all the photographs of the weapon placements, uh, mm. actually, and that he gets angrier as it goes. It's very, um, it is very interrogative looking at his big speech. There's so many question marks um, in there, which I think also from a technical point of probably adds to his, um, his usefulness that actually everything is a rising inflection at the end of it because 
he's asking he's asking so many questions. Um, um, I really like the idea of the dossier of weapons. I think as a really well, I mean, it it is this thing that it gives Tinder uh, a motivation rather than just being a parasite and being a, mm. a, again an undermining figure. You know, if he's he he you know I saw myself the the weapons and we know they're not fictional. Mm. We know they're there. Um, so, you know, Tinder to some degree is doing his job. Um, and you know, there, there is an arms race going on and, you know, it's hawk dove rather than minion and, um, and wise counselor to some degree, um, which I, I wonder about. Uh, any additional thoughts before we just uh, go through this again uh, in a slightly, uh, stoppy starty way? Okay, Porex, let's have your first speech again in that, uh, that, that, uh... And is it thus? And doth he so prepare against his brother as his mortal foe? And now, while yet his aged father lives, neither regards he him nor fears he me. War would he have, and he shall have it so. I saw myself the great prepared store of horse, of armor, and of weapons there. To bring I to my lord reported tales without the ground of sin and such truth, no secret quarrels run about his court to bring the name of you, my lord, in hate. Each man almost can now debate the cause and ask a reason of so great a wrong. Why he, so noble and so wise a prince, is as unworthy left his heritage. And yeah, yeah. I'm just going to pause us there. Just going to pause us there. Um, yeah, it is like he's watched a video spying on the previous scene, isn't it? I mean, you are reporting accurately, aren't you? Yes. Um, you know, secret quarrels run about his court. Um, mm. um, but but uh, yes, it can be a very accurate description of the the the, the last scene. But it is um, food for suspicion, isn't it? Uh, if you say it, uh, about anything, oh, they're, they're conspiring. Um, okay. Uh, but, but, but it seems that, that Porex is, is talking, when he enters, he's talking um, about something he just heard or being informed of. Um, but... Um, if is it uh, well? Yeah, I, it's okay. it, yeah. It's like the video's just gone down of the previous scene that they've just watched, um, or bits of it, and the dossier. And he's just sitting. I'm just thinking with Porex. Maybe for this, to, uh, let's just go go from the top mm. again. Uh, uh, but, just, uh, Robert. Yeah. By the way, that video thing would be a very interesting thing in a um, in a scene mm. in, in the production. They see the video. No. Yeah, entering. Yeah, I, I I just like the idea. Porrick's uh, this time uh, slowed that all right down, like stunned mm -hmm. disbelief. And then Tinder, you've just shown me in the present. You've shown him all the slides. You've shown him the video. He's got the pictures in front of you. Um, persuade him. Mm -hmm. Persuade him. Okay, Porrick, be persuaded. And is it thus? And doth he so prepare against his brother as his mortal foe? And now, while yet his aged father lives, neither regards he him, nor fears he me. War would he have, and he shall have it so. I saw myself the great prepared start of horse, of armor, and of weapons there. To bring I to my lord reported tales without the ground of sin and such truth, lo, secret quarrels run about his court to bring the name of you, my lord, in hate. Each man almost can now debate the cause and ask a reason of so great a wrong. Why he, so noble and so wise a prince, is as unworthy wrapped his heritage. 
and why the king misled by crafty means divided thus his land from course upright. The wiser sort hold down their grateful heads. Each man withdraws from talk and company of those that have been known to favor you. To hide the mischief of their meaning, their rumors are spread of your preparing here. The rascal numbers of the unskillful sorts are filled with monstrous tales of you and yours in secret. I was counseled by my friends to haste me thence and brought you, as you know, letters from those that both can truly tell and would not write unless they knew it well. Uh, I, I, I'm really thinking that the previous scene, uh, either doing it live or not, or just uh, with, with uh, photography, etc. Um, while Tinder speaks here, you just get a replay of the previous thing, just being, you know, like there was a secret camera, just, just, just playing, not with the words, um, just, just that images of, because when he's talking about, you know, the wiser sort hold down their griefful heads, you know, if Jordan's done that, and then we get a picture and get a picture. I just, I just like that. This is so responsive to the previous scene. Mm -hmm. um, and though it's not untrue, it's also slightly twisted and it's given spin. And I really think that's interesting. Um, other thoughts about uh, this so far? Yeah, it, 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 it was interesting doing that, that opening Porrex bit a bit more slowed down, a bit of a kind of disbelieving energy. And even though he sort of ends on he shall have it so, it sort of still feels like there might be room for persuasion either way because uh, i'm also sort of trying to imagine what if you if you plonked an audience a, a modern day audience in front of this that are not necessarily going to know the outcome um could you lead them to think that this is going to be resolved or or what have you are they necessarily expecting kind of civil war to break out and and, and what have you um and actually playing it with that sort of slight disbelief and actually the fact that he's quiet for so long because because uh, tinder speaks and then and then philander speaks that actually it potentially is one of those moments where you look at a character on stage kind of going what's going on in their heads what are they going to come out with after all of this are they going to kind of respond to it with like well, that's a load of bollocks i'm not going to go to war kind of you know the, 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 or, or are they going to take the bait that's dangled which to me is the kind of like it's the fear thing that sort of like that, that prods him, because I think he is afraid. I think Porex is afraid. Like, he is not in a good position. Um, he's well, got something he shouldn't have. Um, as, as he's going to say in a moment, you know, anyone who keeps mentioning I'm not afraid um, <laughs> is clearly afraid. Um, uh, it, it's interesting. It's that last, you know, and he shall have it so. I mean, you could twist that and make it more of a question than a statement, um, mm. depending on how you want that, that, that to go. Um, so that's, I mean, that's... it sort of feels fine sort of like playing it reflect reflectively, kind kind of you mm. know that he hasn't quite finished his thought process. All right, if that's what he wants, mm. that's what he's going to get. But logistically, I'm going to have to think about how that's going to work, like and weigh up the economic consequences and everything. You know, just because he says it doesn't mean it's going to happen. There's going to have to be a thought process behind it, and then it does. It does, sort of, even though it doesn't seem manipulative in the way that, that in, in the previous scene stuff has. It, it does seem to be spin, I think is such a brilliant word for it, kind of going, you know, but they said this in this way, that it's kind of, it is colouring, particularly if we can't hear what's said on the, the film, that it's sort of colouring that with, mm. with, with Tinder's response to it. Um, yeah, and, it, and, and, and you know, the, the, there is that thing, you know, rumours are spreading of your preparing here. Well, it doesn't matter whether, you know, truth no longer matters the spin mm. is in control you have to respond because they think you're resp you're already responding so you better respond because they're going to get you know it's um oh god it's the post-truth era and fake news yeah. <laughs> this, this. um you see that uh, quite you see this in quite a few modern uh, wars in the last 100 years or so where where um where you have leaders who are sort of in this this situation where they they get led into 
either uh, you know intermission creep into an extension mm-hmm. of you know well we've already done this they're going to do this so we have to do this now and 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 things spiral um remarkably quickly and i think this is a, a really good exposition of that philander um before we go into your speech do you have a, a thought um i was just wondering um alex uh, with the character of porex um we'd been told by ferrex a couple of times that he is characterized by pride and <laughs> And there's that there's that moment in your first speech there, nor fears he me, um, that could be taken as being like, well, that's an insult, you know, what it, uh-huh. you know, or mm-hmm. it, it, he's he's not taking me seriously, or he is taking me seriously. How how are you feeling about that? It's kind of interesting as well, isn't it? Because it's neither regards he him, so he doesn't have any regard for daddy. But I don't care about how he holds me in regard. It's whether he fears me or not. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, and I, I think it is, I mean, for, for want of a better phrase, it sort of is a pissing contest, isn't it? It's kind of, it is, a, it, it, you know, a war of mission creep by, by any other, uh, other name, but I think it, it probably is that, it's a slight sort of Napoleon complex, small man complex, isn't it? Because it's kind of, legally, I guess he hasn't, he, he has got something that he wouldn't have otherwise had, so he's kind of got to posture and, and, Puff and preen to defend that he hasn't got the right of seniority, um, so maybe that does feed into pride, and maybe that's how it it manifests itself. I mean, oh, unless there's sort of something that you would do appearance-wise as well to kind of, you know, whether he takes pride in his his appearance, whether he's a sort of I don't know, pretty boy or something that kind of that you. You do with that but it, it's definitely fear that he kind of, like that's the word that he 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 hooks on at the end of that speech doesn't he by saying and then it's the hook that brings him back in would you have this fear rid me of fear i fear not i'm not afraid of him um mm. yeah Let, let's let's run into that um philander if you'll uh, you know, try and try and talk him out of it try and talk <laughs> him out of it I'll do my best but you know <laughs> he's, he's, he's decided really hasn't he yeah. My lord, yet ere you move unkindly war, send to your brother to, to, to demand the cause. Perhaps some traitorous tales have filled his ears with false reports against your noble grace, which once disclosed shall end the growing strife that else not stayed with wise foresight in time, shall hazard both your kingdoms and your lives. Send to your father ache, he shall appease your kindled minds and rid you of this fear. I, I love this speech. It's such a reasonable thing. Just <laughs> talk to each other. <laughs> I mean, there's so many dramas where you sit there going, oh, just, just, a t- they just have to say one word and everything will be fine. And they're just not doing it. The, um, send to your father also, you know, uh, uh, send to your brother, send to your dad. Let's all have a meeting. Because that's the curse of this play is everybody's in a different room. Mm. Oh, it know. almost feels like like Philander would have prevailed had had, had Philander had the sense to end it. Shall so hazard both your kingdoms and your lives, but that is, <laughs> two sentences has sort Time of. to mention fear again. Yeah, that's that's his trigger word. Um, yeah, yeah, you've you've, uh, you've got to prove now you're not afraid mm. that you're not panicking. Um, I mean, there is a. I guess there is a a, 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 a neat little silly theatrical trick to be played with the fact that they are the same person that they cannot possibly meet because they're the same <laughs> person um, that actually sort of you know the theatrical reality of it is that it can't happen or is the audience sitting there going oh my god how are they going to make that happen but it doesn't um, well I, I have to say there is part of me that wants to just paint paint uh, your 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 face <laughs> and have you on a swivel chair um <laughs> between the two scenes <laughs> be brilliant. Uh, we're not doing that we're not doing that. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, Philando, uh, just do your last two lines again. Let's go into Porrox's Rid Me of Fear. Uh, so give, give, give him his trigger. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. And to your father, A, he shall appease your kindled minds and rid you of this fear. Rid me of fear? I fear him not at all, nor will to him nor to my father send, if danger were for one to tarry there. Think ye of safety to return again. 
In mischief such as Ferrex now intends, the wanted courteous laws to messengers are not observed, which in just war they use. Shall I so hazard any one of mine? Shall I betray my trusty friend to him that hath disclosed his treason unto me? Let him entreat that fears, I fear him not. Or shall I to the king my father send? Yea, and send now, while such a mother lives, that loves my brother and that hateth me. Shall I give leisure by my fond delays to Ferex to oppress me all unaware? I will not, but I will invade his realm and seek the traitor prince within his court. Mischief for mischief is a due reward. Uh, we'll just pause there because there's so many things actually to unpack there. Mm. So, you know, your first response is, you know, the, fo the phone lines are being cut. You know, what, what, what we, you know, there's no, there's no line of communications. Um, um, you know, you're going to send a, a good friend to, to, to hit the, 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 he's just going to kill him. He's, you know, the, this is That's happen. a nice kind of sort of like, I don't know what's a way of scissors. It, it sort of almost feels like an afterthought, sort of like a justification, like a sort of, you know, well, well, well I'm not going to send someone else, you know, I'm not going to send someone there to talk to him, but all he'll do is, is, is kind of, sorry. it sort of seems like it's sort of backing up the fear thing, but mm. I wonder whether he does have a moment of kind of self-realisation of kind of going, I'm doing this sort of guerrilla, but no good rulers think about their, their people, and that's why I'm not going to send anyone, because he won't obey, by, he won't play by the rules, because he's not a good person like me. Because um, it sort of, it, it almost doesn't hang to the original thought to me if that makes sense yeah um I, I i i wonder if he's just clutching at straws and he just doesn't want to actually engage with the point it's just mm. no, no i can't i can't you know people die it, it, it's awful yes um and i'm not going to send to the king because mum 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 yes, doesn't like me yes. does, mum doesn't like it. i mean i mean that's so petty <laughs> i mean it's true to some degree but it is also mm. um you're, you're starting to wall it, wallow in self-pity a bit. Um, but, mm. but paranoia too, right? Yeah. Because it's, the danger isn't just from Ferex at this point, it's danger from father, because he comes back to that, like, no, I, I mean, there's some daddy issues or something here, too, you know, like, <laughs> no, no, not going to go ask dad. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Mm. And also, uh, and this is a good tactical point. It's the first, I think, good point of the speech. Shall I give leisure by my fond delays to Ferex to oppress me all, un mm. uh, all unaware? Uh, you know, I can't give my enemy breathing space to get himself together. Mm. Um, you know, uh, because you've got the less good kingdom. You don't have the resources. You need to strike first because he's got, he can always fall back on economic um, power. Yes, I, I don't have any friendly seas with nice ports on them. So. No, no, you've got the, 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 the less, you've got the slightly crap bit of the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> all marshy and boggy. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to name anywhere specific. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, it's it's. I will not. I did. I'm not doing it. I, I I fear him not. I shall. I will not. Um, but you're also asking the question again constantly. Shall I do this? Should I? Of course not. It's a stupid idea. <laughs> um, yes, how uh, rhetorical these questions are presumably quite rhetorical. I don't think he's or yeah. is he expecting? I don't, I don't think he isn't expecting an answer to them. Um, would would Philander try? I mean, I don't think it's the same game as we had the other the other scene where you would step in. Um, the use of my lord is is more um, balanced between the two speakers. Actually, Tinder and Philander both use my lord throughout. Mm. Um, it's nice Tinder does, uh, you know, considering he's a dating app. Um, it's uh, that's quite impressive. <laughs> um, I wondered when someone was going to say that. <laughs> we, we, we 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 were all over it last time. Um, <clears throat> I think you're just changing it to Tinderous just to make it sound a little more. You know, you know, and Tinder, Tinder and Philander sort of go together. <laughs> <laughs> That's a totally different app. And, um, <laughs> uh, terrible things happen. Um, okay, let's uh, let's go back a little bit, but to go to the end of the speech. So um, I will not, but I will invade his. Actually, no. Uh, shall I give leisure by my fond delays? Go for me. Mm -hmm. Shall I give leisure by my fond delays to Ferex to oppress me all unaware? I will not, but I will invade his realm and seek the traitor prince within his court. Mischief for mischief is a due reward. 
His wretched head shall pay the worthy price of this, his treason and his hate to me. How shall I abide, entreat and send and pray, and hold my yielden throat to traitor's knife? While I, with valiant mind and conquering force, might rid myself of foes and win a realm. Yet rather, when I have the wretch's head, than to the king my father I will send, the bootless case may yet appeal his wrath. If not, I will defend me as I may. And and he storms off. Um, There's one know, last he... bit of daddy issue there, isn't there, as well? Yeah. Daddy he is at least your father, you know. Do, uh, do actually do um, you do talk about your brother though, don't you? Uh, yes, I do. Or they uh, use that Ferex, as language. Yeah, Ferrex does flip to brother later, doesn't he? I think. That loves my brother to Ferrex. Well, you also use the name. I mean, the other one doesn't even give you a name. It's just mm. your father uh, to Ferrex. You are father's son. Um. Mm. Whereas there's something more personal here. It's like, um, you know, he picked on you when you were, you know, younger and you've never, you, you remember it. Whereas he just didn't even notice. Just what like, older brothers do. Yeah. Speaking um, as one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, you escalate really fast here, don't you? You really go, yeah. to, you, you're going to kill him. You've made that decision at some point. Was that made before you started? You know, had you already decided you're going to kill your brother uh, from um, and he shall have it so in the beginning of the scene? I don't know. To me, it does feel like there is... To me, it felt like there was, there was an actual... That a decision hadn't been made there. And actually, it's, it's Tinder's sort of enumerating of all the terrible things that are happening that is actually ratcheting up what's going on in his brain um that may be leading him nearer to that decision um i wonder if he i wonder if he is still un, undecided and it really is the kind of thing of like you are you would you have this fear you are afraid of him <clears throat> um, that, that particularly if he has been bullied <laughs> in their youth, like to not show fear of it, to stand up to your bully and kind of go, I'm not afraid. Um, that 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 seems to me to to absolutely send him into this into this incremental kind of um, list of things. But I, I I I agree with you that I do actually think he does he does make a couple of good points. If we are assuming that this arms race is inevitable and, and you know better to strike than be struck first, and particularly if you are in the weaker position and you have more to lose because you have less to lose, if that makes sense. Mm. Um the, the whole kind of um yeah I'm not I'm not gonna you know piddle around sending messengers and writing scrolls to the king and, and asking for mediation if that's going to leave me open to him coming in here and laying waste to my to my kingdom and i love the line the line mischief for mischief is a due is mm. a due reward it's like it's tit for tat like kind of you know i've seen proof of it i've seen the photo i've seen the, the video they've been told by my counselors what's going on what, what do you expect me to do mm. um but he does he does go quite graphic with it doesn't it? I, I, the, the, the lovely sort of like counterbalanced um image of his yield and throat to the traitor's knife mm. um and then i have the wretch's head that's kind of really beautifully um beautifully balanced but it yeah it does it does get it does get bloody <laughs> quite quick and yeah. I, I wonder how i wonder what you could do i mean obviously i can't do it on zoom because it would be horrible but but how um how much how much the physicality of the two is different um mm. in terms of not just in terms of, of, of age difference between them <clears throat> but whether porex is that little more considered and a little more studied in his movements whereas this is kind of something really physical about it particularly if you you know if you are talking about being around the table and with with photos that what what that gives you to do in terms of using a using a prop or using those photos or you know um to to, to, to sort of make this maybe a more a kinetic scene i, I don't know um, it, it 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 definitely there is a progression here you know you mm. you you do go from you know once you get the triggering there 
it, it just co keeps going those rhetorical questions it keeps it, it, it it's not like there's a lot of flowing speech you actually get sort of single lines double lines um uh, but each one sort of building on you know uh on each other i you know shall i wait for him to invade no i won't i'll invade him and then i'm going to cut his head off um rather than do anything else um i'd rather do that than um than send a message to my father mm -hmm. uh because it's a waste of time so there off he goes and it yeah it just keeps building in quite terrifying ways and they all storm out and they take the documents with them and Philander's the left there tidying up the, the, the last of the, the photocopies um, pouring a brandy into into a into a drop from a hip flask into a in, into something and, and just left left mentioning Troy um, which you know as we all know went really well um, <laughs> Uh, other thoughts in the room about this, this, this scene? I mean, it's not a very long scene. It's a very co well condensed bit of action, but it, it re it's really nice that we've looked at the two scenes in tandem this time. Uh, without I mean, a gap. he did, Porrick's pretty much just, I mean, he, he has two speeches. I mean, it's essentially one speech, isn't it? I yeah. mean, the, the first one is so, is, is so short. It, I mean, it is like, I, I am impressed by this, um, by this place economy, if that makes Mm. sense in terms of what it sort of compresses and I, I was really struck by that in, in act five when we had the, the original the, the sort of read through of it but that essentially you know you you met one of the major characters and you've sort of you've got everything within that speech that you need to work to however you want to play him there's so mm. much in there that you can use to 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 create that that character and I, I really like the idea of like thinking about it from an audience point of view and, and what an audience expects you know when even when an audience that isn't you know a, a, a necessarily a dedicated theatre going audience goes to see one of the plays by whose name shall not be mentioned they have a sort of idea of what will happen in that play because they will have heard it at school or you know somewhere whereas with this um i'm just thinking of like philander's sort of um last speech here that may yet to be quenched Eric consume us all like whether you watch that as an audience and go oh that might lead somewhere we might that you know it might everything might <laughs> blow over there might be some form of mediation which of course um, there's not going to be like how far you can play with audience expectation and I think it's interesting that we sort of don't see um we talked about it being quite episodic in terms of characters that we don't see these characters again really um, Wait, you, you, we will see porrix again uh, um, yes uh, um, it, it's like they pass the baton between these two but, scenes yeah, yeah. ferrix disappears um because yeah. uh, he dies um because you kill him i mean you know this you you press the nuclear button and <laughs> uh, you launch the nuclear weapons and uh, and he's gone Je uh, jennifer I think that's what's really interesting me at this point of um the economy of the of the play and the way the the characterization functions with the complementarity of the two brothers because i think we have ferrix taking us up to the point where he's contemplating what if this is treason it could be treason and then we pick up with porrix ah this is treason it's treason treason traitor traitor and then wretch um which is <laughs> <laughs> I think a little funny. Um, and then the same thing with the with kind of the traje trajectory of the weapons plot. You know, ah, oh, it's going to be secret. And then the second we get into the new, uh, new scene, there's no secret. Right? We've, we've already just, we don't need to discover it. It has happened. Mm. But particularly with the characterization, I think, I feel that there's, you know, it's like Legos that are building on each mm. other. Mm. Um, you know, Even though uh, they're different. You know. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, the, 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 I think there's uh, we, we we've spoken again also. You know that this is a play that sort of like we get flashes of action, uh, you know, within a much wider narrative, and there's a much bigger canvas that we're not seeing, and it doesn't matter because what we're seeing is so arresting and interesting. Um, I, think, I, I think that's what I meant by in terms of the, the, the what you said, passing the baton on from the characters. That as a modern audience, having had you know Ferrex built up in this way we would expect to see him 
die or, or, or more to be added to that. And it's kind of, we don't get that, which is interesting, I think, for a modern audience who are used to these characters that are sort of fleshed out and delved into and brought back, and particularly with the, the economy of a lot of modern drama, having to write for, you know, two or three actors, uh, because that's all a, a theatre can budget for, that we're used to having that. We're not used to having these, these plays like this, or, you know, Noel Coward's Cavalcade, which I mentioned before, that sort of flash through, through history where we see different characters. And I, and I think that would be something really interesting to play with in terms of audience expectation and doubling mm. um, and things like that. It also reminds me of um, that, that uh, weird act in Fantasia, the, uh, the Rite of Spring one with the dinosaurs where you kind of have a scene play out there and then that's the end of the Triassic and then you have a scene there and that's the end of that one. It's a huge span um, of, of history. But um, I think it does something really unusual with, with uh, an amazing economy um, mm. to it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the thing we see in the dumb show after this act, um, the funeral for, uh, for Paul Ferex. Um, uh, but, you know, I have to say, as, as a modern producer, I, sorry, there's going to have to be something battle death thing. Um, I mean, if we've got two actors playing the two parts, then, you know, I'm sort of seeing a sort of uh, a, a Turkey's um, uh, sort of... Um, Antigone-esque brothers fighting in hand-to-hand combat kind of thing rather than uh, uh, just killed in battle or whatever. Um, so, you know, I, I'd, I'd probably put that, I'd throw the audience a crumb there, I probably would. Yes, otherwise it's a bit disappointing, like one of those sort of soap funerals where no one comes back from it because all the actors have left and you're kind of like, well, we didn't see it. So it doesn't, it has no emotional yeah. resonance. <laughs> um, but the use of visuals throughout this, I mean, you know, obviously not for an audio version, but, you know, for the, the, the use of visuals is, 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 it's invited by the original use of visuals to play around with how we do it mm-hmm. as, a, as a modern text. Uh, we're very much into extra time now. So final thoughts about the two characters, anything about the play generally, um, uh, before we wind up for the evening. Uh, Stephen, have you got any sort of uh, final thoughts or, um, or, or questions, things to raise for future sessions? Uh, not really, no. I, I, I thought Alex's last point about the economy, I thought that was absolutely fascinating point. Um, because because we've got a lot of you know kind of contemporary trained actors that you know people are are looking for building parts so what you're having to do here is is um some kind of weird sort of metonymy you know where the the whole thing is the part as it were in both senses Uh, and i i'm really interested in that as a sort of technical uh, show off if you like this is this is something which is going to demand a s- very particular set of skills from its actors you know it's good <laughs> it's, uh, I, I think that's interesting from the point of view of the way you know people talk about um passions in in, in 16th century acting the idea that you you demonstrate an emotion uh and what we're getting here is something that's much more interesting than that i think we're demonstrating it's not a kind of a, it's not a mood you know somebody isn't giving you wrath or something like that we're seeing we're seeing long speeches but with the way in which they they uh, are sequenced uh, is really interesting and it, it takes you back to the idea of the you know the rhetorical training that educated people have in this period you know this, this is kind of Cicero sort of drama, you know, that we can, we are, we are guided through this. I think it's really interesting that that performers can just spot that and latch onto that so quickly. Uh, Nuno, uh, any uh, any final thoughts from you, sir? Um, Complementing what uh, Stephen said um, about passions and. There was in this workshopping a bit of um, playing around with passion, because when when Alex did it um, less passionally, um, more um, kind of a rational way of acting, it, it seemed like um, a less emotional driven uh, character or characters. It, it was. It was for me. It was interesting to see it. Uh, this this uh, twin character 
more of um, someone that is ill advised or someone that is driven by those daddy issues or those brother issues we talked about that 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 made uh, quite a difference that would be something we would have to consider in the some kind of production is he in a in a killing mood or always or or both of them or are, are they in some kind of um, atmosphere or a social uh, milieu that, that just um, makes them like that but okay interesting mm. Yeah, I, I think that the, there are big questions that we're all asking here, that of which we, we, we are not going to supply any kind of answers, which is, which is fine. Sorry. Um, but, you know, the, the, the tone and the, the performance style for this, um, I mean, the, the text seems to be flexible enough to take lots of different directions, actually. We could pull it down and we, can do a, we could do a very deep you know, a psychological profile on these characters, but and, and I think the play would work, works quite well that way. Um, but also we could give it um, a, a much more demonstrative acting style. And I mm -hmm. think it, it would similarly work it would, depending on context and venue. Um, you know, this, 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 this play is, uh, uh, does absorb those, 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 uh, those options. Uh, Jennifer, any final thoughts from you? Um, no, I was pretty much speaking as I thought. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, Alex, any, any last thoughts from you then, sir? Um, I think only what I said about it last time, which is that it's, it's a revelation to me as a, as a play. I, I, I did have to read it at university and I remember <clears throat> not loving it very much at all. Um, but, but actually that in, I suppose it's the danger of reading a play, isn't it? That, that actually in performance, there's so much more you can do it. You read it on the page and you're like, whatever. Um, and then you actually perform it and go, oh no, well, there's stuff happening. Um, and I, I, I think it is, you know, it, it is simultaneously economical and rich in, in what it does. And the flexibility of it has surprised me that actually there are different ways you could you could put it in. Also the way it lands on the, the ear. And I know we, we all sort of have our ears in for this type of drama, if that makes sense. Um, it doesn't seem as, as uh, again, I'm trying to put myself in the position of someone watching this who's an audience member who is maybe not necessarily au fait with, with all the drama of this period. It seems quite, even though it's written in that, that Ciceronian style, I think because it's written in that Ciceronian style, because it's so well balanced, it's actually quite easy to comprehend what's going on. It's not one of those plays that you kind of read the speeches and go, what have I just said? Mm. Um, that it's... Uh, <laughs> um, and obviously performance would help with that, you know, and I, th and I, I have no qualms in adding those, those elements to a, to a thing like mm. this that kind of go, okay, if you need an equation, it's, it's, it's the dossier about the, the, you know, weapons of mass destruction or, or what have you. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's fantastic. And yes, I'm, I'm very much in favour of Gorbaduck as a play, not the king thing. No. Um, I mean, it's, it's interesting because uh, today we, uh, this afternoon, we uh, we started reading finally Cambyses, um, uh, which is the same year or, or thereabouts uh, to this, and um, the the similarities and differences between these two plays um, are, are are fascinating as well. We we, we said we very much enjoyed been doing uh, Cambyses, um, uh, though yeah very very different universe in in certain respects um very similar in others um so that's uh, that's one for anyone watching this video do do uh, do also comp not only go back to any of the other videos we've done on this but also uh go back to uh, uh to have a look at cambyses because it's an uh, interesting con contrast uh you can have a lot of fun with uh we will be coming back to gorbadoc at some point in the future uh, we're going to be peppering these uh, sessions uh, over the next few months as we work towards trying to pull together an audio production uh, which will probably best will in the world won't come out till next year um, but uh, this is this is part of that process so if you have any thoughts or additions or ideas or contradictions you want to throw at us uh, we're on twitter at beyond shakes uh, or just leave a comment on the video um, or, uh, or, or all the uh, all the all the things online get in touch uh, let us know what you think all I have to say is thank you to all the wonderful readers and contributors today and goodbye.